What's going on guys? John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to create a game class for Pygame and Python. All right, guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to create a game class for Pygame and Python. But before we get started, if you like this video, and want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos to teach you to code. It's coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime memberships on my courses, videos and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we created this very, very simple Aspen game. If we run this guy again, we can move Aspen around and sort of grab these guys and all of that. And at the end, when we close it, it tells us how many we got, right? So very basic. And we did that so that we could introduce class-based programming, object-oriented programming to our Pygame games to make coding easier. So we want to expand on that idea and add a game class to our thing. And a game class will handle game type things, updating things, keeping track of score, pausing, all of that good stuff. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor, the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Pi Game series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our exact code from the last video. If you didn't see that video, check the playlist. I've just renamed it Aspen Collide 2.py. It was Aspen Collide last time. And what we want to do here is we need to make a couple of little changes here. But before that, let's come up here and let's define a game class. And we could just define game. You'll notice down here with our other classes, we passed in, we inherited pygame.sprite.sprite. We did that for our Aspen class as well as our food class, right? And the game class isn't necessarily dealing with creating sprites. So we don't need to do that for the game class. So let's come down here and with all classes, we always want to start out by defining an underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore function here. And we want to pass in self and that's fine for now. Oh, I guess we, we could pass if we wanted to, but think about this. Our game is going to handle everything in the game. And what do we have in this game? Well, we've got an Aspen and we've got a bunch of food and those are sort of separated out into groups, right? Sprite groups. Remember we created these down here, the food group and the Aspen group. So anytime these things collide, it's the groups colliding, the sprites colliding. If we want to deal with those things in our group class, we need to pass them in. So we need a food group and an Aspen group. So let's pass them into our init function here. So I'm going to start out with the Aspen underscore group. And then we also want the food underscore group. So in order to use these things in our class, we need to take them from being passed in here and then add them into the class. So let's go self dot Aspen underscore group. And we'll set that equal to this Aspen group. That's the thing we just passed in right there, right? And then again, we can here go self dot food group and set that equal to our food underscore group. Okay, so that's good. We can pass these things in. Now, what do we want in our game class? Well, we want it to be able to update as the game goes on. So we need an update function. So let's just define update. And we always want to pass in self and let's just pass for now. And we also probably want to check collisions from these two groups. So let's create a define uh, check underscore collisions. And we also want to pass in self there. And for now, let's just pass. Did I spell collisions right? C O L I S. Yep, looks like it. So anytime this update function calls, something's going to happen. Now, in this video, we're not going to get into a lot of things here. But in future videos, this is where we're going to use things like self game over, right? If we wanted to call a game over function or self dot, I don't know, pause game, right? Or self dot uh, check score, you know, whatever we want to do that's sort of gamey related, we're going to put in this update thing. So then as our game loop plays and we call this update function, it will do these things. So like I said, we're not going to do that just yet. We'll do this in future videos. In this video, what we want to do is check the collision. So let's call self dot check underscore collisions. And that will call this function. Now we don't actually have anything going on here yet. Uh, but we'll fix that in just a second. So okay, that looks good. We need to make a couple of changes to our old code. So here in the Aspen game, we checked collisions inside that function, right? So let's comment that out. We don't need to check the collisions there anymore. It's going to be handled sort of broadly in our game class here. So we can get rid of that. And in fact, we could really just get rid of all of this code, but we're going to need this code with some slight modifications. So I'll just copy that and we'll bring that up into our check collisions 
function in our game class. Now we're gonna have to modify this and we'll talk about that in just a second. But first let's get back down here. And eh, for now we can just kind of comment all of this out or just delete it and that's good. Now, another thing is, remember we passed in the food group and then added that here in the last video. We really don't need to do that anymore because we're passing both the food group and the Aspen group into our game class, right? So they're already sort of defined right there. So we can get rid of that there. And then let's see, same thing here. We could comment this out or just delete it. I'll leave it for now. And that looks good. So let's check the food thing. Anything we really need to change here? No, not really. But when we come down here and define our groups, remember we passed in that food group in the last video. Again, we don't need to do that because we took that out just now from right here, right? And right here. So we, we've taken that out. We don't have to pass those in when we create our group. So, all right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we need to create a game object. So let's come down here and here we're creating our food group and our Aspen group. And underneath this, let's create game object. I'm gonna call this our game, call it anything you want really. And this is gonna be a game class. And let's see, if we come up here, oh, big error here. This should be a class game, not defined game, doy. Uh, but anyway, when we run our init function here, we need an Aspen group and a food group passed in to our class here. So when we call an instance of our game class, we need an Aspen underscore group and we need a food underscore group. Okay, that looks good. There's your object. Now we need to update this our game instance inside of our loop. So let's come into our loop here and anywhere down here, let's update game instance. And here we could just call our underscore game dot update. And that dot update will call, let's see, do, 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 do this function, which will then check for collision. So now here are collisions. We need to tinker with this a little bit. In the last video, we used Sprite Collide because we had one Aspen and a one group of food and they were colliding. And now we've kind of changed this around. We're passing in a specific group and a group. So here, instead of Sprite Collide, we need to change this to Group Collide. Basically the same thing applies as Sprite Collide, it's just now Group Collide. Except here, remember this code used to be in our Aspen class. And so in order to handle Aspen, we just called self. Well, this is no longer in the Aspen class. So in order to handle Aspen, we need to call self.aspen underscore group, which is defined right here. We also have our food group, which is also defined right here. And then after that, we have one more argument, but now we need actually two arguments. The first one is, hey, this first thing, do we want it to be destroyed whenever there's a collision? And I don't want Aspen to be destroyed, but I do want the food to be destroyed. So the next argument here is whether or not the next thing, in our case, the food group is destroyed and we do want that to be true. So, okay, that looks good. We've got our game class. We have got our game instance, we've got our game update. When we update in the game function, we're calling the check collision function here, and then we're doing group collide. So let's go ahead and save this, head back over to our code, and I'm in my C slash games directory, virtual environment is turned on. Let's run Python aspen underscore collide dot pi. And here we see, yep, one, two, three, uh, go get it, get it, get it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. Yeah. Anyway, 7654. All right, that looks good. Now, like I said, we're not doing a whole lot in here. And in future videos, we'll use this update section to do all kinds of things. So we might have a self dot game underscore over function. We might have a self dot uh, check score function, right? We might have a self dot play song function, but you know, whatever things that are very gamey game related, update the score, uh, check to see if it's game over, restart the game. You know, you might have a self dot restart game function, whatever you have, those will all be in this update function. So as our loop down here, ba -ba -ba, keeps looping, right? Our while loop here, our main game loop. Every time, you know, it loops, this update function gets called. That way our game things, our game updates 
can constantly be sort of running in the background. And so you can check things like the score, the whether or not, you know, you want to restart, whether you want to pause the game, you know, you might have a self.pause game function, right? Those will all go in this update function. And then just like this check collision, we'll come down here and create them. So, you know, it would be like define pause underscore game, we would pass in self, and then, you know, you would just do stuff, whatever you wanted to do in there. That's what we would do. Like I said, we'll get into this in future videos, but now we have sort of the framework, the infrastructure, the basic class-based object-oriented structure that we can now use to build out our game in a much more sort of logical and easy to understand and wrap our brains around, right? Just having these classes defined means we don't have to have lines and lines and lines and lines of copied code throughout our game. Like I mentioned in the last video, we just call these these game instances. So that's the game class. Pretty easy. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeb.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeb.com, and I'll see you in the next video.